Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 4th of February 2019 and the time is just gone 11.35 GMT. Um, to be honest, it's been a fairly quiet start to the, to the week. Um, there wasn't much volatility in Asia overnight. Um, this week starts off the, the Lunar New Year, uh, so it's likely that we're going to see um, low volatility as China is going to be out of commission for the week. Uh, and when you have a major player like China uh, on, a, on a holiday, um, it's unlikely that we're going to see any massive volatility. Traders are still digesting the, um, the, 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 the quite strong jobs report that we saw from the US on the back, on the back end of last week. It was a monster number. It came in well above expectations. But given that the December number had a major revision to the downside, and there's also reports going around that a lot of uh, gov U.S. government employees were seeking part-time work from the private sector to make up for their, their loss of income due to the government shutdown, there's a lot of speculation that the, the massive number that we saw out of the U.S. on Friday is going to be revised lower uh, next month. Uh, the unemployment rate ticked up ever so slightly, but so did the participation rate. And the wage figures remain solid. So it was still a fairly good report. Um, but ultimately, it's not going to, to change Federal Reserve's policy. The US Central Bank in recent weeks has taken a, a, a less uh, aggressive and less hawkish stance and are aiming more towards a more, aiming more, towards a more neutral outlook. Uh, and the report, regardless if we do have uh, further revisions in the next few weeks, it's likely going to be the case that the Federal Reserve are going to sit on their hands and kind going to play the kind of wait and see game. So that's translated into, to be perfectly honest, not a whole lot of volatility for the um, for this for the session in Asia that, that, that happened overnight, and also for the European session that we're seeing today. There isn't much of movement. That being said, there are still many major issues going on. The U.S.-China trade dispute is still ongoing. Italy's in recession. There's questions over the health of the wider eurozone economy, but for the time being, traders uh, seem to be just kind of sit, sitting on the fence uh, at the moment. But all these issues are still ongoing; they just haven't been really kind of addressed yet. Uh, so let's take a look at a few of the major markets now. Uh, we're starting off with the FTSE 100. The FTSE 100 had a very good week last week, um, and even today it managed to press on higher yet again. We're firmly above the psychologically important 7,000 area. We're currently up around 7,037. Uh, we're up this this morning. We've had levels not seen since early December. So the market's moving higher. It's, continue, it's continuing the bounce back that began um, in late December. We're pushing higher. If you can hold above this region here around 7,000, the big psychological number, we could look at testing uh, 7,145, a level not seen since early December. And if you go beyond that, an next area to keep an eye out for would be this region here, 7,220. It acted as uh, support on a number of occasions and also in a, a bit of a resistance as well uh, at the back end of last year. So it could be an area to keep an eye out for in the, near, in the kind of medium term. If the market does manage to drift lower again, um, we could see support come into play from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 6,860. And a move below that might bring support into play in this area here, uh, the kind of the low of um, of late, late January, which comes into play in at 6,732. And should we see a break below that area, that will then signal uh, a multi-week low. I mean, we could take us back down towards the 6,600 region or perhaps, perhaps even down as low as the December lows of 6,536. Take a look now what's going on over in Germany in the DAX. To be honest, it's been a bit directionless recently. It hasn't moved the whole lot in either way. So it's, it's, so the DAX, like the FTSE, has had a very decent bounce back from late since late December. But a lot of last week... Uh, we did see a bit of uncertainty. Uh, there's talk that Deutsche Bank and Commerce Bank are going to be merged. That didn't do the, the German DAX uh, any favours. But then again, it hasn't had a major sell-off. And it's really given back some of the ground that has managed to actually, managed to actually kind of claw back in, recent, in, the, in the last, say, five or six weeks. So to be honest, it's more kind of had a, a bit of a kind of indecision crossroads, if anything. Um, 
ultimately, if we hold above, say, the 11,000 region, we could, we could expect to see further gains from the DAX. And if we do look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this, where this trend line comes into play in around the 11,500 region, maybe 11,520. Uh, if we take a, if we take a draw trend line from the highs of June through the highs of July and also through September, I know it isn't perfect, it doesn't, doesn't uh, line up all those highs absolutely perfectly, but it's a quite, it's kind of, it's, it's gone through quite a few of those highs. We get this trend line here, and ultimately, while we, we remain below that trend line, we could the, the wider negative trend could still be intact. But if, but if, I mean, but that's not to say that we may not rally up towards that trend line, potentially test it again before potentially turning lower. So in the near term, we might see the market uh, head up head up towards the kind of five thousand eleven thousand five hundred region. Uh, if we do manage to break above that trend line and hold above it, that could be the could be the sign that the wider downward trend is coming to an end and we're looking to get a press on higher from there and we could be looking heading up towards the uh, 12,000 mark which coincide which is not only a big psychological number but also coincides with the 200 day moving average this red line here if the market fails to break above this trend line here and does manage to turn over on itself yet again and go below 11,000 that could be a sign that the markets at the markets meet short term correction the bounce back from december has come to an end and the market's looking to turn over on itself and continue in the wider downward trend that, that's been in play for many months so move below 11000 could take us back down towards um 10785 and a move below that could take us back down towards the december lows of 10277 I'll take a look at what's going on over in the US, starting off with the S&P 500. So first things first, if we take the S&P 500 on a daily chart, and if you draw a low from the lows of February 2016 to the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line here. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the trend line here, and as we can see, the trend line was well respected uh, back in October. And also in November, there was a bit of a kind of a bit of trading in and around the trend line in December. But notice once the market um, traded below the trend line, it had a couple of one last attempts to get back above it, and then we we, we saw the major sell off. So we saw a few failed attempts to get above the trend line again. It couldn't. Then we had a very sharp sell off. But but since late December, we have seen quite a decent bounce back. And we can see in a, uh, we can see that in mid January. The previous trend line support began to act as trend line resistance, and now we're now we're actually back above the trend line. We've closed above the trend line on a couple of occasions, and we're just about holding and hovering above the trend line. So, when it previously acted as trend line support, briefly acted as trend line resistance, and now it appears as if it's acting as trend line support yet again. If we can hold above that trend line, which comes into play in around 2,705-2,704, in around this region here. If you can hold above it, that could be the sign um, that that the the sell-off that we saw in at the back end of last year has come to an end, and the and the, the S and P 500 is looking to kind of rebuild uh, on the on the December rally and look to actually press on higher. So if you can hold above it, we could be looking at retesting the 200 moving average, which comes to the play at 2,743, and a move beyond that could take us up towards the psychologically important. 2800 and move beyond that might bring the 2815 17 region into play that was those the highs of october november december were all in around 2800 and kind of 15 17 that kind of region uh, so it's, that would be a, quite an important area to keep an eye out for because if you take out that area then we, we could be retesting uh the all-time highs but if the market falls back below the truth Back falls back below the trend line support. Uh, we could see some support come into play in uh, 2610. This blue line here, we can see that that, that um, has been actually a fairly decent support recently. Uh, but if the market does manage to drop below that again, and it goes and it firmly and it falls firmly back below the trend line uh, support, we could see that this region here, uh, 2532, come into play as support, or potentially 2438. This region here. As we know from Dow theory, 
the, uh, the averages must confirm each other. So we talked about the trend line support on the S&P 500. We're now going to talk about the trend line support on the Dow Jones. So if you take the daily chart of the Dow Jones and we draw a low between the lows of February 2018, April 2018 and May 2018, we get this trend line here. I know it's not as good and as clear cut as it is on the on the on the S and P 500, but the principle remains the same. So that trend line along here acted as support in October. It traded a bit below in November, but by and large it acted as support in November. And then once again, it traded firmly below it in early December. It tried it unsuccessfully in a few occasions to get back above it and close above it, which it couldn't. And then we had the major sell-off um, through kind of mid to late December. So similar situation that we saw in the S&P 500. And lo and behold, it's a similar situation since late December. The, the market, the, the, S the Dow Jones, bounced back considerably. It ran into resistance at the old trend line. Um, support, the old trend line support acted as new resistance. And then once again, the market managed to get above the trend line and as close above the trend line. So... If you're trading the Dow or the S&P, if you're trading only one of the two US indices, please keep an eye on what the other ones do because while both are above their respective trend line supports, it makes it more likely that both markets will continue to push on higher. If both fall back below their respective trend line, trend line supports, it makes it more like, likely that, that the market is going to turn over on itself and the, the wider downward trend is going to continue. So, if you so while we hold above, there is the uh, the sport in the Dow Jones. It makes it more likely that we're going to continue to push on higher from here, head up towards the twenty six thousand region. Uh, but if the market does manage to fall back below the trend line support, uh, we could see support come into play at this blue line here, the fifty day moving average, which comes into play at twenty four thousand one hundred eighty five, and a move below that could bring 24,000 into play, it's a big psychological number, or perhaps even as low as 23,663. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the gold market. And like I said, the Federal Reserve appear to be sitting in kind of in kind of wait and see mode. Um, their, their tone is very different to, from say October when they were when they were talking about uh, they were signaling several interest rate hikes in 20, 2019 now we're looking at a scenario where they're probably going to be sitting on their hands for the uh, for the kind of near to medium term and that softened up the US dollar there's been there's this fairly strong in, inverse relationship between the US dollar and the gold market so while the gold market well, the US dollar is soft and it doesn't appear as if the feds the Federal Reserve are going to be hiking interest rates in the near term that's been beneficial for gold. Gold had a fairly decent bounce back uh, beginning in October, but really from about mid-November, around the time the Fed started to change their language, uh, that we see gold press on higher at a fairly fast rate. So last week we saw gold up a fresh eight-month high. So the trend is clearly to the upside, and the um, and the kind of momentum is clearly to the upside. So what we have seen in the last couple of sessions, gold hand back some of those gains. So if, if you do manage to drift lower. We could see support come into play in around the kind of 1200 region, 12, 12, sorry, 1300 region, 1298, um, perhaps even as low down as 1276, the more kind of recent low, 1277. It, you know, we, we could see support, the market drift back to 1300 before we're looking at actually retesting uh, the recent highs of say 1326 or heading up towards the kind of 1350 region. Even if you drop below 1300, to be honest, as long as if you hold above the 1276 area we, we, that's that, that that would still constitute um, gold being in its wider upward trend it's only if we start heading back below the kind of um, 1250 region and below the 30 moving average at 1246 could then we, 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 we should then we we'll then would we'll, uh, begin to get worried about the gold's upward trend uh, take a look now at what's going on in the oil market st starting off with WTI so obviously, the oil markets have had a major sell-off between October and mid, mid, late, late uh, December. But we can see here that the oil market has been grinding higher, has been pu pushing higher, uh, ever so sl slowly but surely have been pushing higher. Uh, we've managed to kind of head up, head back to levels not seen uh, since mid-November, uh, mid to late, mid to late November. So we're at multi-week highs. That would, that would suggest that there's a bit of positivity flowing back into the oil market. If we can hold above this blue line here. The 50 moving average, which comes into play at $50.55. If you can hold above that, 
it's likely we could see further gains in the near term. We could be looking at heading up towards this area here at 58 spot 10. And if you go beyond that, it could be a target going to be psychologically important, 60 bucks a barrel. But if you do manage to drop back below the blue line here, the 50 day moving average, we could be looking at heading back down towards 47. And a move below 47 could bring the December lows into play. Keep an eye on um, what's going on on Brent crude as well. Like I said about Dow Theory, how the averages can, must, should confirm each other. It's a similar situation in Brent crude oil, whereby Brent crude oil is not too far away from um, the levels also last seen uh, in the kind of mid, mid to late December. So if the markets are moving in the same way, you can be more confident that that move is going to continue. Um, so both essentially at multi-week, multi-month highs. So the markets in, in Brent crude is pushing higher. If they can hold above this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average, which comes to play at 59, uh, just, just above $59 a barrel, it's likely we could see further gains. We could be looking heading up, heading up towards um, the mid-November high of 68 spot 36. Uh, any moves to the downside in, double, in, in brain crude support might come into play in this area here in a 57 spot 50 and a move below that could take us back down towards the $50 uh, a barrel region. I'll take a look now at a couple of the major currency pairs, euro versus the US dollar. It hasn't been the most interesting uh, time for the currency markets um, in terms of actual price action. Uh, there's a lot of news out there which is interesting, but in terms of price action, it hasn't been the most interesting. Uh, going from the lows of mid-November, broadly speaking, the euro has been pushing higher against the US dollar. We've seen a series of higher highs and a few higher lows as well. Granted, I know we had a sharp sell-off uh, in, late, in late January, but broadly speaking, the markets have been, the highs have been getting higher and the lows have been getting higher as well. So if you look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the 115 area or up a high as 115.70 and that also coincides roughly with the 200 moving average. Um, but if the market does manage to drift lower, support might come into play in around this, this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play just south of 114. And even if you drop below that, as long as we hold above the most recent lows in around the kind of 113 area, it's likely that the wider upper trend could continue. But if you do have a break, a size of break, below 113 that could take us back down towards the um, the mid-November lows of 1 spot 12 16. So obviously there's a, bit, a lot of news in relation to Brexit um, but that being said the pound has, has done fairly well against the US dollar we obviously had a with the exception of this uh, sharp move to the downside when we had a kind of a, a bit of a flash crash in the currency markets um, in early January by and large the pound has been in a fairly steady upward trend versus the US dollar for since uh, since basically um, early December. So within about five or six weeks, it was a fairly solid rally. The market's pushing higher here. We had a very we hit a level not seen since mid October, um, only 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 last week. But ever since then, the market has been handing back some of the ground. But notice how it seems to be kind of. Get, getting support off the 200 moving average, which comes to play in around 1 spot 30, 46. And if we can hold above that area or we can hold above the kind of 130 area, it's likely in the near term we could see the market press on higher. And if you take off the recent highs just north of 132, we could be looking at heading back up towards uh, the kind of early October highs of 1 spot 32, 57, or up, up towards the kind of 133 region. Uh, a move to the downside, well below uh, the 130 area, could take us back down towards this region in around here in the 1 spot 28, 15 area. I'll take a quick look now what's going on in the week ahead. The week ahead can be found on our, uh, on our website. If you go to cfcmarkets.com, under news and analysis, you'll find uh, the bulk of the, of the, the, um, the analyst content is posted to, the, to this section of the, of the, web, of the website. So taking a look at what we can expect uh, on the week ahead, tomorrow, Tuesday, we have the Reserve Bank of Australia uh, meeting. On Tuesday, we also have full year figures from BP, the London listed uh, oil company. Um, on Tuesday, we have a raft of service uh, PMI figures, uh, the main European ones, also the U UK and also from the US. Uh, on Tuesday, we have fourth quarter figures 
from the American company Snap. Um, as I mentioned, we have the non-manufacturing ISM figures of the US on, on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, we have first have figures from the British home builder Bar Developments. Uh, Wednesday, we also have fourth quarter figures from the US company GoPro. On Thursday, we have the Bank of England inflation report. And also on Thursday, we have fourth quarter numbers from Twitter. Um, some of the updates that we do for the market analysts from in London and around the world gets posted to the website. But some of the updates that we do actually get posted to the trading platform. So if you click on this um, this under market pulse, you'll see that the second option down is insights, which is this tab open that I have here. Uh, some of the updates that we do get posted directly to insights. Please also keep an eye out for insights where we have the uh, the we have, we have updates of economic indicators and also some corporate earnings as well throughout the day. Uh, before I go, uh, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CFC Markets, please feel free to leave a review and good reviews. Thank you very much.